Hi, Christopher's Factory. Glad you're here. This is a Spirograph. It's a common children's toy, but I found that it's very cathartic and relaxing to play with even for adults. This video has two parts. In the first part, I'm going to show you how to model it in Fusion 360. If you're just a beginner, don't worry. It's very, very easy. In the second part of this video, I'm going to be drawing with it and talking about what makes a good Spirograph and how you can improve and iterate. Enjoy the video. I just wanted to preface by saying this and you will now be greeted again. Hi, glad you're here. You can make really easy Spirographs to 3D print using add-ins that are already in Fusion 360. If you just go to Utilities, Add-ins, and Spur Gear, um, I usually use a module of two. Module just defines how big your teeth are. Um, and then number of teeth I just do, I, I try to get it about the size of a sheet of paper. I think a sheet of paper is 280 millimeters uh, long. And my printer has a max size of, of 220 millimeters anyway. So I'll do maybe, what, 100 teeth? Is that too much? Maybe we'll do 90 teeth. Fill it, I'm not gonna change any of this stuff. Gear thickness, maybe three, and we're gonna do no hole. Okay, we'll change the fillet radius because apparently it's too large. I, I don't really pay much attention to that. It doesn't seem to affect it that much. I'm sure it does, but for my purposes, I've never had the root fillet radius be that that important. Okay, so it's a good thing that I actually did a little bit less because I forgot the, the most important part that we're gonna do here is we're gonna make a circle that goes all the way out. The circle we can maybe make 200, I think would be about good. That looks perfect, actually. So then we're gonna grab the part that is between the gear teeth and the circle. I'm gonna hide the gear and extrude this up three. I changed my mind on something though. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna offset the profile of the gear by just a little bit, just so that I have enough clearance when I put my smaller gears inside of it. Okay, now we're gonna make one more gear that will go in the inside and sort of ride around in there. Uh, we'll do module of two as well, otherwise they won't mesh. Number of teeth for this one, I don't know, maybe 30? I think that sounds good. And we'll generate that gear, and there he is. So you've actually just made a sun and planet gear set. You might not have realized, but this is, I mean, that's exactly how you model a sun gear, or that's one way that you could model a sun gear. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on, and make a new sketch inside the gear, and make a circle that is not, that is eccentric with the center of the gear. What we're doing here is we're creating points where we can put our pen as it slides around. So I'm gonna do maybe eight holes, 16 holes. That looks good. And I'm just gonna pick whichever ones I want. And I will manually extrude that one, those ones down. Okay, so we selected some holes, extrude them down to the bottom. So obviously you want these eccentric from the center of the gear, because if you just put holes in the center of the gear and you trace it around, you're just gonna be drawing circles. So that's what kind of makes the fun designs of the Spirograph, is having different points that are all eccentric. You know what I mean? So then as you trace them, I will say though, be careful because like this hole right here, I bet you this one's gonna be real hard to trace if you've never played with a Spirograph before. If you have a hole on like the very outside of the gear, I mean, you're like drawing circles as you go around. It makes it very hard to to trace but you know give it a shot i mean that's that's what this is about right it's just having fun playing around messing around like i said these are super easy they use the spur gear that's already in fusion 360. um they're they're really fun honestly if you have kids they're really fun to play with i mean, as an adult i kind of it's kind of cathartic to just you know lay one of these down on a paper and just get some different colored pens and pencils and just trace them around bust open a uh a ice cold sparkling water and just have yourself a good old time man when it finished printing, I took the Spirograph off and followed my own advice and cracked the heck out of a cold boy of sparkling water. I don't know if it's just me, but these things are so much fun for me to play with. I just sit there and draw little shapes and circles and just have a good old time. I think relaxing little games like this are underrated. A lot of us, myself included, put a large pressure on ourselves to always be doing something productive, but I think it's really important to take time for yourself to do things that maybe they're not productive, but they're relaxing, you know, you're doing things in the real world, and spirographs are just perfect for that. You know, you need the right amount of attention, you need to be gentle with it because it, it actually takes quite a bit of focus to trace these circles because since the holes where you put your pen are eccentric with the center of the gear, you're tracing these funky patterns. You know, it's 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 a very non-fluid motion that your wrist has to follow. And so I find that it's it's like focusing, but relaxing. Like I, I feel like it's not just that dumb feeling that you get when you're just scrolling through Instagram or something. Like I actually, it feels, relaxing, but in like a focused way. I don't know, it's hard to explain. Maybe it's just me. So what makes a good Spirograph? Well, one thing is I, I think I would have done well to stick with my original thickness. I plan to print this at three millimeters and in a hurry and to save a little bit of plastic, I ended up doing 1.8. And you can see it's pretty floppy. It kind of deforms as I go around. It makes it sometimes such that my little traces, my patterns and stuff are like, you can see they're kind of distorted, which it's not a huge deal. You know, you could say it's an artistic choice. The other thing that I would add, especially if you're gonna do this with your kids is, you know, in an effort to save plastic, I tried to make these as, as simple as possible, but I think I would add somewhere to like rest your arm so that you can lean on your arm and have it hold down the sun gear and the piece of paper. 
Um, especially with kids, I, I think they're going to be distracted and they're going to accidentally shift the paper from the sun gear and then they might get, you know, frustrated. So that's what I'll do on my version two. The eccentricity of the hole relative to the gears is kind of interesting because sometimes I've gotten patterns that are really, really fun and interesting just based off of a hole that is slightly offset from the center. But other times I get patterns that are really fun based on holes that are on the very edges. So that's why I say, especially, you know, if you're watching this, I assume you have a 3D printer. Do this yourself. Make your own gears. Make tons of holes in them. Just make a whole bunch of different things that you can try because that, that really is where the fun Inspire graphs are. It's something to inspire creativity, you know, so, so get funky with it. It crossed my mind while I was making this that I, I, I don't know if it's possible, but it'd be kind of cool if you could have like a planetary gearbox spirograph. Again, I don't know if that's possible, but that'd be really cool. So if you think that's a good idea, give a like to this video and let me know in the comments, and I will look into doing that. A really important consideration when you're making a spirograph, and something that I kind of neglected when I was making mine, is the number of teeth in the different gears. The way that gears work is they will return to their original positioning every X number of turns, where X is the highest common multiple of the two gears number of teeth. So in my case, my sun gear has 90 teeth, and my planet gear has 50. So the highest common multiple of both 90 and 50 is 10, which means that every 10 spins, I will revert back to my original position. So there is no hole on this gear that will trace a pattern that will last any longer than 10 spins. So if you want to make really fun designs, that should be a consideration. I mean, you want you want gears that have really large common multiples so that you can go a long number of spins without the pattern repeating. Or maybe you don't want that. Maybe you want, you know, two. It, it all depends on what you're looking for. These are really fun and easy to make, and there, there really is a large runway for you to be creative with them. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps me out. I've been totally humbled by the amount of growth that my channel has seen in the past month. I really, really am appreciative to every single one of you. This community is already amazing. I love seeing the positivity and helping each other out in the comments. I try to respond to every single comment, although I will say you guys are making that hard for me recently, <laughs> but that is a good problem to have, and I'm, I'm very thankful for it. So if you have any tips or questions, make sure to leave them in the comments. As always, the files that I used in this video will be available in my Thingiverse. I'll probably be updating this because there are a couple things that I want to change. The gear ratio, you know, the, the fitting of the sun gear. So make sure to check that periodically. I'll, I'll probably update it within a couple days. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.